I didn't see you there. Welcome to my composition capstone concert. Put away those programs because you're not going to need them. I'm here to guide you throughout the night. So, our story begins. When people ask what your major is, and you say composition, the response is almost always, Oh, you write songs! Which, yes, sometimes. But it's so much more than that. If you don't know it already, by the end of tonight you will come to learn that I am a sucker for a good story. So I don't write music just to write it. I compose to express something. Being a composer means conveying thought and feeling with sound. It means thinking about what you're trying to say, what the audience will hear, what the performers will see, and how the world will interpret your work. It means crazy ideas to spark joy as a performer and listener, and meticulous work in making it sound just right, and editing note after tiny note just to make sure it all matches. It means countless hours chasing a grand idea, wasting minutes forcing harmonies, or discovering the perfect melody in seconds. To me, being a composer is creating excuses to play with strangers and discovering their sounds, or finding ways to express love as you play alongside friends, and all of that creative energy painstakingly placing every note, finishing and sending music to your performers, and putting schedule after schedule together to make one rehearsal work, it all leads to something like this, Performance Day. Um, shouldn't you start getting ready? What are you talking about? I have plenty of time. Ready? Nope. Isn't that exciting? My story begins six years ago. My flute choir wanted to do an arrangement of a rather popular song. You might have heard of it. The only issue? The arrangement was absolute hot garbage. So, me being me, with not a second of my life dedicated to writing or arranging music, I told my director, what if I gave it a shot? And that night, for the first time ever, I put notes on pages.
For as long as I can remember, I was a singing, dancing, and constantly creating ball of energy. And after figuring out how arrangement works, maybe this whole writing music thing wasn't so scary. I started to compose melodies of my own, with one of the first pieces I ever wrote for flute choir inspired by my director. She is a woman of intense passion that sparked my little musical soul. And always, she would say, at the end of a piece, you had to hold on to that last moment and keep the magic that we created. All right, I did it. I graduated high school, and now I was a first year. My history and flute kept me wanting to stay within my own comfort zone and write more for my instrument's ensemble. So I wrote a flute quartet titled Snowfall. During my first winter at Susquehanna, I was in a practice room at my usual late hour when it started to snow. So on December 4th, 2019, at 1.29 a.m., I recorded a piano solo in reaction to how what I saw made me feel. My eyes were glued to the window and my hands floated along the keys, giving way to a melody that stuck with me. It stuck with me so much that a whole suite dedicated to my love of snow was born. It was a win-win! I got to write about snow and Dr. Long got me to write for different instruments.
huge part of my inspiration as a composer are the people I meet. And what better way to be inspired by people than to live with them? It started junior year. Emily, Chris, and I banded together and kidnapped a fourth non-music major to complete a suite. If you know us, you can imagine what the atmosphere in our dorm is like. Constant noise, laughter, MIDI files played from opposite rooms, dance breaks, ukulele wars, game nights with Spicy Uno, and so much more. But underlying it all is a simple message of stable, traditional friendship. So please enjoy our poised proper piece, Sweet Senior Sweet for Sweet's Sweet Seniors. It makes sense if you think about it. I'm a huge fan of Golden Era Broadway, 
So when during COVID, I rediscovered old melodies and found there was a story connecting them, I had to see it through. My musical, A Chance Encounter, was born and is still being worked on today. Well, not today. Today, I'm kind of busy with whatever. You know what I mean. People often say, write what you know. But I would say, write what you wish you know and how you want to feel. That's what my musical is to me. Yes, I hope it will be enjoyed by many. But in the end, I wrote the show I wanted to see. That's what theater is to me a gateway of expression and accidentally learning a life lesson while the main characters fumble through the show. Even as the sun sets even as the moon rises, I can see it all stand still. Even as the world turns, even as the seasons change, I can see the world stand still. <laughs> which is somewhere where my family grew up going to. So when I think about creating a melody for that, wild request. Well, it's a beach. And sometimes you just get an idea for something.
be a person. But my oldest brother, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should have seen me this morning, my goodness. Um, oh, Dread's a very bad C, so I'm thinking C minor. I know I fumble a lot while writing. I doubt my ideas or get so caught up trying to make it perfect that I lose the forest and only see trees. But luckily, as always, I have my second brain with me. Because if you know me, you probably know I'm Kirsch. We're just a bit of a package deal. We were put together randomly as first year roommates and it's been one heck of a ride ever since. I know I wouldn't be who I am today without her. And I couldn't let my days at Susquehanna end before I wrote a duet just for us. Words, in this case, can't be enough to express everything that she's meant to me and everything we've gone through. So I think we better start playing in case we start crying.
far, this whole night has been a look to the past. But now, I want to shift our attention to the future. Another year brings another life as my family prepares to welcome our newest member in a few short weeks. Though I myself am not inclined to go goo goo gaga over babies, this one has already stolen my heart. So it's only fitting that the dearest gift I could give for my someday soon niece is a lullaby. The performance tonight is an instrumental arrangement, keeping all but one line of the song for family until the sweet baby girl is born. I return one last time to thank you for joining me. We've seen where I started as a composer and a person and how far I've come, but I'm not done yet. Once this last piece is over, classes will continue until finals and then graduation and on. I plan to pursue a master's and career in music therapy where I can utilize my talents and music as a gateway for great healing in others and myself. Before I lead us into the final chapter of tonight, I would like to encourage you, if you're not sick of my compositions yet, to return on April 23rd when the talented members of the Susquehanna University Symphony Orchestra will be premiering my first ever full orchestral piece. And it's a doozy. <laughs> but there's so much I could say about my time here and how transformative it's been for me. Sure, there have been plenty of rough patches and moments I wouldn't go back to but there are also days spent in the places surrounded by beautiful people that I will always remember. I wouldn't be able to create such music or come up with zany ideas without the students and friends who encouraged my wacky thinking or the professors who have influenced me during my time here. So, if you'll allow this narrator a break, I'll pass the mic to the one on stage to tell this final story. of you. I'm not addicted to my phone, just what it holds. They like to make fun of me, but I've got a bad 
Thank you.